is given to people who will carry out those purposes. In Acts chapter 5, 32. We are his witnesses of these things. And so also is the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that obey him. You want to know what he means by his witnesses? The great commission. The great commission. Anybody that says, Lord, I'm willing to take up that mandate. And here is my life. Use me to affect my generation. After you have given your life to Christ, you are a candidate for the endowment of power from on high. The ministry of Jesus is a combination of a number of things. And we must all learn. It's a combination of his life. When you hear about his compassion, his kindness, his goodness, that one is not anointing upon. It's his life, his love life, his mercy. And all of that. And every believer must bring that beauty of the inner life to bear on the kind of ministry or whatever it is that God has called you to do. It's a combination of his faith life. There were many times that he ministered by faith. And that is the beginning of supernatural exploits. Learning to walk by faith and learning to function in that realm. These are things that we need to all go and study. Then, but these were not enough. So by the time he turned 30, he went to John for baptism. And after John baptized him, he began to pray. He began to pray. And as he was praying, he was baptized with the Holy Spirit. So you need the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, there are evidences of a, a spirit-filled life. When the Holy Spirit is present, there are evidences. The Bible has given us a number of them. For example, when Jesus gave us the signs that follow believers, there are signs that the Spirit is evident. Mark chapter 16. Demons can't stand anymore. Your presence. And he, said, he mentioned that you will speak in other tongues. This is one of the ones that we have highlighted more than any other one. Because it's usually among the first to show up. He said, you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. Healings will start flowing. And of course, if the Holy Spirit has come, has filled you, it will also neutralize substances that can kill you or that will destroy your life. And that's why that issue of praying in tongues or maintaining a spirit-filled life is very important for believers to live victoriously. It protects you from sicknesses and if things that come from without, but it also protects you from within. And of course, he also said they shall take up serpents. The same way that power nullifies sicknesses in people. It will nullify that. So praying in tongues is one of the ways you activate it. But beyond the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there is now the fullness of the Holy Spirit. The Bible has a lot to say about the fullness of Christ. Jesus operated at that level of fullness. Where he had heavy mantle of power on his life. There are higher dimensions of manifestations of power that show up when people go for the fullness. So it won't just be minor miracles or minor signs and wonders. Major, major signs and wonders and miracles will break out in your ministry. Dead people rising, cripples, just the same kind of signs that followed Christ. And Jesus said, you will do the works I did and greater works. And now to move himself to that next stage, that's why he went for consecration for 40 days and fasting. If you ever go through 
painful experiences, persecutions, trials, losses. It can even be a period of time something happened and your health gave way and you spent some time in the hospital. Listen to me, my friend. Don't ever waste it. Don't sit down there asking, oh, Lord, why, 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 why? Listen. You see what people go to do 40 days fast to accomplish a trial, affliction, and a time of tribulation. We deliver it for you faster. As long as you maximize it and utilize it as a period, if it's people that are too busy, maybe you're broken down and you have to spend this two weeks, maximize it. It can even be the enemy that sends the attack. Maximize it, convert it. There's something called converters. Solar energy is falling, but the converter converts the thing and stores it in battery so you can it come, turn it to power and use it to power. Convert your suffering. Never you waste your sufferings. And there are many scriptures. Peter spent a lot of time on that, showing how that the afflictions, the persecutions, the things that we endure are used to convert for us exceeding weight of glory. Okay, let's look at the one that Paul wrote. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment. It doesn't last forever. It might be a season. Work it for us. The second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. Look at it. For our light afflictions, why we look not at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. The things which are not seen are eternal. Look at the other side of that equation. If God permitted it at all, understand that the cross always leads to the glory. The glory is a realm that people don't access without the cross. So sometimes people that God want to press into that, it's like, it's like olive oil. To get the oil, you have to crush the olives. It's like palm oil. To get it, you have to crush the palm. The God takes you through a threshing floor. There are certain people that have been through some of these seasons. It's just that they don't know why. They are busy saying, why, Lord? Why me? Why that? Understand how this thing works. One man spent 40 days, 28 days, 14 days fasting because all of it is self-denial. Uh, going through a, a, a time of subduing the flesh, subduing the soul life so that that rich riches of glory can break out. Now, this is where a lot of people get stuck. They don't understand because in their theology, they don't have room for self-denial. They don't have room for affliction. They don't have room for suffering. They think everything is against them. You know, sometimes maybe ordinary transfer, you post a pastor here, he will start complaining and they lose and that's how they die. That place where they stop is where they will never grow that level. The Bible said the spirit led him into the wilderness. People, other people are running away from the wilderness. They think the wilderness means that God hates them. They think if you're a leader now, you send him into a wilderness situation, that it means you love him. That's how you precipitated world champions. That's how you precipitated heavyweight champions. The other cases is strategic deployment. We see this area. We know that this guy's potential is bigger than where he is. Maybe he's just assistant. Maybe he's just there assisting him. Or maybe he's in a particular place. We know that this place is, this potential is more. There is more. God, God has more confidence in him than the level where he is. So on the basis of that, there is another one. We live in a multicultural, multi-ethnic society. We want our leaders to have an all-round exposure. If a young man has been in, in the southeast growing, doing ministry, he has not seen, not even a, a one quarter of his calling. He needs to gain cultural intelligence. He needs to get exposure. So we want them to be exposed to south-south. We want them to, after a while, go to southwest. We want them to be exposed to maybe north central. We want them finally to even get exposed to call not. And then the man becomes whole. After that, we want him to test international ministry to become complete. You need spiritual intelligence. You need intellectual development. So we need to send him to school. Can you imagine two boys? The father is saying, this one, two of you need to go all the way to university and then get your master. And one says, they're after me. So he stays back at home. 
He stops at primary school or stops at nursery school. And his brother goes and then with, at the, after a few years, you bring them. There is no room for comparison. A lot of the things that people think that are against them are the very setup God wants to use to unlock the next level of glory in their life. For our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, because his exam is not for, for your whole, it's just a season. Work it for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Because there is a realm of glory. There is a realm of faith. There is a realm of the anointing. Then there is a realm of the glory. That is the highest level. Men that carry God's presence. That's the realm of tabernacle. That's where God wants to bring his people and bring the church. The realm of the fullness of Christ. There were few men that operated there. In the Old Testament, like Moses, like Enoch, like Elijah, and a couple of other prophets. Many people are happy with Pentecost. Many people are happy with just mere gifts, talking in tongues and a few gifts of the Spirit here and there. There is a, a realm of fullness. The fullness of the Spirit. God wants the church to come there. And this is what is going to lead to the return of Christ. You'll be hearing about the last day's revival. This is what is. These men. They will carry literal fire. Carry literal gl glory. There will be times they will be transfigured. And people will see it. Like it happened to Stephen. Some of them will walk into villages. And clean up the whole place. In Ephesians chapter 1, every chapter of Ephesians dealt with Christ's fullness. Chapter 1 dealt with it. Chapter 2 dealt with it. Chapter 3 dealt with it. Chapter 4 dealt with it. Even chapter 5. In chapter 1, let me read from verse 19. What is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? And this is according to the working of his mighty power, which he demonstrated in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. That power will measure up to the level of power that operated in Jesus in his ministry, measure up to the level of power of his resurrection that demonstrated by raising him, measure up all the way to the power that flows from his throne. Verse 21. And this raised him and put him far above principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is to be named, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. And verse 22. It's something I want to show you in 22 and 23. And had put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. And look at verse 23. The church is his body and the fullness of him that fills all things. The church is the fullness of God wants the fullness of Christ to function through his body, the believers. And then we will accomplish all those things he said. Everything will be subdued under his feet. Every. Not cancer exempted. Nothing can be exempted. Leviticus chapter 23. Yeah. Let's read from verse 8, 15, 16, 17. You shall count unto you, he's talking about Pentecost. You shall count unto you uh, from the morrow. So after Passover, after all the feasts, the seven days, you start counting 50 days. Actually, first of all, you count seven weeks, which is 49 days. Then the next day, the 50th day, is the Feast of Pentecost. And that's how it's calculated. So when the Easter period finishes, the resurrection of God, the next day you start counting seven seven weeks so you shall count from the morrow after the sabbath from the day that you brought in the sheaf of the weave offering seven sabbath shall you count that's seven weeks that's 49 days then yes 
16. And even unto the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, shall you number the fiftieth day, fifty days, and you shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Now, this is shocking. This feast of Pentecost is writing about. He wrote about the three major feasts. Now, the feast of Pentecost, they look at what he said, verse 17. You shall bring out of your habitation two waves loaves of tent deal, and they shall be of fine flour, but they shall be baking with leaven. They are the first fruit unto God. God said, put leaven in the bread. Do you know what leaven is? It's yeast. You put it, it makes the blood. Do you know what it is? Sin. He said Moses put it as a sign that Pentecost does not bring perfection. It doesn't bring maturity. People will flow in the power of God, but they will still have personal issues. That's why this is not the destination. Because Pentecost, Passover happens to lead us out of Egypt. Pentecost happens in the wilderness at Mount Sinai. Pentecost feast was 50 days after they left, they experienced Passover and left Egypt. And do you know that day? It was that day that Moses went up and the glory of God came down on Mount Sinai. But a lot of the Jews died after Pentecost. They died in the wilderness. And that was not God's way. Their destination is the promised land. Not the wilderness. I have been born again, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm now a church member. No, that is not where to park. Pentecostal movement is not enough. There is a fullness of Christ. And this yeast is causing a lot of problems in the body of Christ. This level. I showed you about Corinthian church that stopped at Pentecost with a lot of yeast in their midst. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, look at verse 7. The yeast needs to be purged out. And that's the point I want to make. Those that will move into the fullness, which is the Feast of Tabernacle. The Feast of Tabernacle is the fullness of God's glory. It's the fullness of the Spirit. The Feast of Tabernacle is also pointing to the return of Jesus. It's about the last day's move of God. You have other words you use for it. You call it latter rain. The former and the latter rain, the first one. That's what that feast is talking about. It's not just the former rain. The former rain is Pentecost. When you do, and there are seasons where you do both feasts. When you do Pentecost, is during the first, the, 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 what they call, uh, uh, the spring, during the early harvest. That's why during that time you hear about offering first fruit. These are harvest. But you, you celebrate the Feast of Tabernacle during the final harvest, the end of year harvest. is September, October. It's usually about six months between the two. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, even here in Nigeria, even here in Africa, um, the planting season begins in March, April. The first rain falls. We call it the, the former rain or the first rain. So it prepares the ground for planting. But at that same period, there are things, harvests that come out. Cashew come out. Corn come out. Uh, where are some of the things we'll be eating? Eh? mango come out and so on and so forth. But nobody harvests yam. Nobody harvests cocoa yam. Nobody harvests... There are a lot of other... But you see, those harvests come during the latter rain. The final harvest. The end of year harvest. That's when they celebrate Paso uh, tabernacles. So, when they... Pentecost was poured out. It led to the early harvest. And we have been harvested for many years now. Close to 2,000 years. But we are now in the time of the final harvest. Scripture gave markers to know. There's a parable Jesus gave in the Bible called the parable of the tars and the wheat. 
He said, a man went and sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tars. And so, the next day, the servants of the man woke up and saw tars growing with the wheat. And they came and reported and said, should we go now and remove all the tars? He said, don't do that. Because in an attempt to remove the tars, you will destroy some of the wheat. And that's what God is doing now. He said, leave both to grow until the harvest time. Everyone said that word, until the harvest time. Say it again. And the question is, when is the harvest time? Is that period that will lead to the return of Christ? The last days. That's what the Bible calls it. And that's what is called the time of the latter rain. Matthew 13. I want you to see a little of it. Verse 30 says, Let both grow until the harvest. When the time of the harvest comes, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tars, bind them in bundles and to be burned. Then gather the wheat into my barn. And that's what the rapture is all about. The rapture is when the wheat, because Jesus explained the two. He said, the tars are the children of the wicked one. The wheat are the children of the kingdom. So you see evil in the society and God looks like he's not doing something about it. He said, leave both of them to grow. Harvest is coming. I don't want to destroy this guy and he's somebody that will probably give his life to Christ in the next two weeks and be part of the harvest and be part of the, uh, you know, the wheat. I don't want to. Let's give everybody full opportunity. We are now in the harvest season. The final harvest season. The field is the world. It's interpreting the parable. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. The tars are the children of the wicked one. Verse 39. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. But the harvest is what? The harvest is what? The harvest is what? The end times. And this end time, the reapers are the angels, but the reapers are also the saints. I'm part of the reapers. But you need to know that we're not walking alone. We're walking. Who are these angels? Are they not all ministering spirits? Send forth to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation. We are not alone. We are walking with innumerable company of angels to finish the tax of world evangelization. But hear it. It is during this final harvest every year in Israel, that the real big deal happens. And just to begin the final harvest, the latter rain now falls. The autumn rain. And that's the one that is the, the double portion rain. That's the one that is the former and the latter rain. That's the one that is a, a heavy downpour. That's the one that Joel was writing about in Joel chapter 2. In verse 23 of Joel chapter 2, he said, I will give you the rain, which is the former and the latter rain in the first month. James chapter 5 verse 7. So the Lord said, Be patient therefore brethren unto the coming of the Lord Jesus because the husband man, that is Jesus himself, waited for the precious fruit of the earth. What are the precious souls? The harvest. The harvest. Harvest of souls. Why is he telling us to wait? Because God doesn't want anybody to perish. He has to get this last day's move before he closes the door. And from what the Holy Spirit has shown me, and from what I've seen in the scriptures, this last revival will bring more people into the kingdom than what the church has accomplished in the last 2,000 years. It's because of the dimension of the outpouring of the spirit that will be backing it. Be patient, brethren, to the coming of the Lord Jesus. Behold the husband man, the man that planted the field. That's what he's talking about. Husband man is a farmer. 
waited for the precious fruit of the earth and he had long patience for it until what happens? Until he received what? The early and the latter rain. Early rain, Pentecost at the upper room, Acts of Apostles chapter 2. The latter rain is what the issue is now. Let me show you what they do. Go back to Leviticus 23. What they do during Passover. <laughs> Verse 27. Uh, during Tabernacle. During this last feast. I, I'm sure you know that the first feast, Passover, has been fulfilled. It, it was fulfilled when Jesus went to the cross and died. The second feast, Pentecost, has been fulfilled. It was fulfilled when the Holy Spirit came down. We are now at the time of the fulfillment of the last feast. And the last feast, which is tabernacle, cannot be fulfilled until you are in the last days. So all these prophecies you see in the Bible, in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be there a specific move of God reserved for the last days. The mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above the mountains and all nations shall flow into it. Help me touch your friends. Say, are you still here? Or have they left you behind? Yeah, because I know where many of us dwell. Baby food. The, and then those are made small progress. Pentecost. So we are talking about maturity now. Uh, some people are, I wonder what, what else? What else is there? I think I need to even tell you, if this is all God has, then if this thing we have seen in the church, that is all, then read your Bible. The Bible talks about the fullness of Christ. Okay, look at what they do during uh, uh, this last feast. The last feast is what I'm talking about. That is what we are living in the time of his fulfillment. And this is where God, God is now going to be moving the church. <laughs> I'm a voice that is said to herald this new move. There are a number of other men of God that are understand what I'm talking about. Leviticus 23 from verse 27. Let me show you something. Also, on the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be the day of atonement. Now, this is the month where the tabernacle is held. It's held on the fifteenth day. But on the tenth day, five days before the season starts, there must be a day of atonement. Do you know what this is? A day of purification. A day of consecration. You know why? Nobody with yeast is entering into tabernacle. God wants to take the people beyond Pentecost. His requirement is they have to clean up their life. And, and look at a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you. You shall afflict yourself. All Jews fast on that day. Part of consecration is fasting. Part of consecration is self-denial. That's when we get rid of things that has been hindrances and all the Jews shall afflict their soul and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And this offering, and I'm going to talk to you about it in a minute, but verse 28, and you shall do no work in that day. It's a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. Then notice, notice. There is an offering, we're going to deal with verse 29, but just before I hit that, there is an offering God wants, there is an offering made by fire. That's what Romans chapter 12, verse 1, put it up, let them see. It is your life. The secret of the power of God is consecration. Take your life and offer it to God like a living sacrifice. Many of us have not learned how to give money, how to give other things. We have not learned how to give our life. 
offer it. And then lay it on the altar. I lay my self life, my will, the things that don't easily beset me. I surrendered them. I let go. They are cleaning up. I did a tape on, on the power of consecration. You need to listen to that tape. The altar is a place of death. The altar is the cross. It's a place of death. It's a place where you die to the old nature, to the old man, to self life. It's a place where you finally make up your mind to let go. You know what they are. The things that have beset you. The things that have been causing you to stumble. That is hindering you from running the race. From being all that God has called you to be. If you are hungry like me for the deep. For the more of God. For his fullness. If you want to cross into that realm. You have to go through atonement and purification and consecration. You know what Jesus did? He now went for 40 days fast. A man has already been filled with the Holy Spirit. He has the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He has all these basic things that we all have. Why is he looking for more? Why is he looking for more? So that the day he missed that some of those situations, the day his disciples met that child that was suffering from epilepsy, and they tried, they couldn't. They asked Jesus, he said, this kind, this kind, this kind, this kind does not go, but by fasting and prayer. The day you meet those other problems, those other issues, this kind type of problems, you have what it takes to take care of it. You stop doing ministry with limits. Ministry in measure. You start carrying the anointing without measure. The glory of God can flow through you. Romans chapter 12. He said, I beseech you, brethren, by the message of God. Present your bodies, your body." So the temple is one of the issues that needs to be cleaned up. The temple. This glory is going to tabernacle in that. Uh, tabernacle is the glory coming to abide. Present that temple, your body, as a living sacrifice. Holy. And acceptable to God. That is the service. That's the offering. That's the sacrifice. Made of fire. Your life. Everyone lift up your hands. Say, say, just do it now. Do it now. Lord, all of me. I lay it down. And Lord, I know some of the things that have messed me up. You know what they are. I repent of them. Atonement is repentance and cleanse and personal purging. I purge myself of these things. The Bible said if anyone cleanses himself, he will become a vessel of honor. Fit for the master's use. Fit for every good work. You see, this is beyond just the gift of grace. People who want to walk into God's fullness have to cleanse off. And you know, it's not just a one-time thing. In the course of your work with the Holy Spirit, there will be times he will point at something. You see this way? I don't want you to ever dress like this again. You see this kind of hairstyle? You see this? You see this type of shouting jewelries? I don't want it. Uh, others may, but you may not. Paul said all things are lawful, but not all things are helpful or expedient. Some things are not sin, but yet, the Holy Spirit said, mm, for you, do you want to come in into this deeper? The starting point is the ones that are sin. Lift up your hands and talk to him again. Talk to him here now. Because God is sending you out of this conference as one of those men that will turn the world upside down. You can't go back to your field. This is your day of atonement. Because Jesus has entered within the veil, taking the blood into the holiest of holies. You don't have to wait for a special day of ceremony or for a special whatever. This is your day. You can take that blood and cleanse your garment, cleanse your soul, cleanse your heart. You can enlist into the God's end time army. Mm -hmm. 
You know, there is that song that talks about this temple. Come and feel this temple. Make it your... No, no, just be playing it gently. The offering made by fire. Lift up your hands one more time. Lord, I'm your sacrifice. Receive the sacrifice. I am your worship. He's writing that song for Romans 12. This living. He added this section. Leave me at the altar with my father. That's consecration. Leave me at the altar with my father. Leave me at the altar with my father. Leave me at the altar with my father. Receive this living sacrifice. Your words. I said this living sacrifice. I bring you more than a song today. I brought myself. I am your sacrifice. I bring more than a song today. I brought myself. I am your That water must be clean water and the vessel must be clean vessel. That's one of the most important message about tabernacle and fullness. If you take, I told you every efficient chapter wrote something about that. Day. If you get to a place like chapter 5, he said that Jesus is sanctifying and cleansing the church by the washing of the water by the word that he might present it to himself, a glorious church without spot and wrinkle. This is the state he expects us to be in by the time he returns. And this is the state of the man that will carry this entire glory. A man that has allowed the word to wash and sanctify a man that has allowed the blood of Jesus to do a thorough project a man that has allowed the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit in his life don't only pray for power and for glory always pray for your inner life Your hunger for power must not exceed your hunger for holiness. Your hunger for righteousness. One is the foundation that carries the other. Leviticus chapter 23. Now look at verse 29. Whatever soul that shall not be afflicted in that day, he shall be cut off from among his people. Okay. He shall take you on the first day, everybody take note now. I'm about to show you something. 
And anywhere you see this in your whole Bible, you know it's tabernacle that is being celebrated. That day you shall take on the first day boughs of goodly trees like branches of palm, boughs of thick trees, and willow brooks. Branches, branches of trees. You, you cut palm trees and all that. And it's not Palm Sunday. You cut these branches and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. That's how they observe this. Everyone do like this like you have a branch of a tree in your hand. Wave it like this. I'm going to show you this. You know, and then you shall keep the feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a status forever. 42. And you shall dwell in booths. Now, everybody that is in Israel that day, you don't live in your house. If you like, be a king, be a priest, be whosoever. If you like, let, be, let your mansion be 24-room mansion. You come out in the street. You make booths. You know what you make them? With tree leaves and plants. What, what, what's an example of boots? What, what do I used to make? Eh? You know, God was telling them, you know exactly what you did in the days you came out of Egypt when you were moving in the wilderness? Tabernacle. I wanted to get the picture of tabernacle. Make some tent. Make shift structures that are made with trees and branches and all of that. And then you use leaves and cover it like palm leaves and all that. That's where you're going to live for seven days. Do you know what he's telling them? That you are pilgrims on earth. That feast is the feast that's talking about the second coming of Christ. It's the only of the three biblical feasts that is yet to be fulfilled. And it happens every September, October. You go to Israel, you actually see them doing this. What is telling them? You are pilgrims on earth. You have built all this building. You have built all this business. One of these days is time to leave. Just like in the days you came out of Egypt, anytime they settle, the day the glory of God starts moving, they have to move. One of these days, the trumpet will sound. The dead in Christ will rise. And you are going. He wants them to live in the consciousness of the rapture. In the consciousness of Christ's return. They that are married should live as though they are not married. Don't get too attached. Allow that woman to have small freedom. So she can be used by God. Win souls and all that. Those that use this world. Those that do business. Those that have properties. Those that are what. Be detached from it. Live detached from the world. Just like the Jews in the winter. Be ready to move when God says move. Until the rapture. When the final move will happen. Be ready. You see, some pastors, they grow churches. God can't send them on missions anymore. They become institutions. Elephants grow fat. When you were young, you used to say, Your will is my command. Anywhere you send me, I will go. Anything you command me, I will do. Now, just small money change in your pocket. God come. No, no, no. The people that will carry the glory are the people that are ready. You know, you know, Philip finished having a revival in Samaria with the whole city bowing. You know, that's where some pastors will have died. God said, Head to the desert. There is an Ethiopian Enoch riding a chariot heading back home. Philip did not waste time. And you know, people wonder, how do you ride Philip airline? It is where you are on the go. As he stepped to obey, the Holy Ghost caught him. He won't catch you while you are. Anybody that wants to answer Jew must go. That's the first instruction of the Great Commission. The master went and he said, as my father sent me, so sent I you. We call it the M1 of mission. The model of mission. That is Jesus. He set the example. Every G.O. must be a model. God's people need to learn to stop sitting again and occupying as if this world is our home. We must learn to live in boots. We must live in readiness of Christ's return. We must also live in readiness to obey God. Anytime he says do this, do it. He says give this, give it. It's not piling money in the bank. There's nothing wrong with savings. First Corinthians chapter 7. But this I said, brethren, the time is short. It remained that both 
time. It's time the coming of the Lord. It's short. That both they that have wives be as though they are not. Be free enough to do God's work. Don't say it's marriage. Go and read about the marriage supper of the Lamb. The three classes of people that missed it. What are the excuses? The first one said, I married a new wife. I cannot come. Don't let marriage be the reason you miss the rapture. The second one said, I bought a property. I mean, I'm into real estate. So I had to be so I cannot come. It's all these material things of life. This one said, it's my, my farm, my investment. I, I've got this, whatever. I cannot come. My business. Today we're in China. Tomorrow we're in, in Japan. Pursue your business. Make all the money. Finance the gospel. But live in readiness. Live in readiness of his coming. If you want this latter rain to fall on you. If not, you will die in Pentecost. God is not giving this power to those who will not be willing to obey him. The Holy Spirit, which God gave to them that obey him. He is not going to give this power to those who will not carry out the great commission. The Holy we are his witnesses. So is the Holy Spirit, which God gave to them that obey him. When they wave that thing, they are rejoicing that they have brought the final harvest. And billions of souls made it in the rapture. Guess what they were waving that day before God? Branches of palm trees and all these trees. Because we have completed tabernacle. We have reaped the harvest of the earth, completed it, and Jesus has caught taking us back home. That's what that thing means. Okay, Revelation chapter 7 verse 9. Watch. And I behold, lo, a great multitude, we no one could number, stand before God. Do you see where they are standing? They are no more in their different countries on earth now. They came from all nations, all kindreds, all people. They stood before the throne. Everyone said the throne. These are people that made it in the rapture. And they are billions because he said it's, nobody could number them. They are billions. At the time John was writing 2,000 years ago, that number, they don't have name for calling it billions and you know all these harvests came out of the last days they stood before the throne before the lamb clothed with white robes and what do they have in their hands everyone wave your palms wave your palm say i'm part of the end time harvest and i'm going to be part of the tabernacle say it i'm going to be part of the tabernacle i'll be part of the harvest and I will be part of the rapture. I will be part of finishing this assignment. And I will be part of the saints that are marching in, moving in. Can I hear an amen? I will be part of the entire harvest. Say it again. Wave it again. I'm part of the entire harvest. And I will be part of the ingathering. That's why the Feast of Tabernacle, most of your Bible calls it the Feast of what? Ingathering. It's the gathering of the final harvest. All the feasts have two, two names. Passover is also called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Pentecost is called the Feast of Weeks because you count those seven weeks. Tabernacle is called the Feast of Ingathering. It's the Ingathering, the last harvest. That's why the latter rain is reserved for the last day's church. It said the glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former. And this greater glory is for the honor. You see the level of harvest there. Go, go back, go back. Go back, yes. And I behold, they stood before the lamb with the palms in their hand. Wave your palms again. Now, verse 10. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, we sit upon the throne and to the lamb. Verse 11. And all the angels stood round about the throne. The day all the angels will be recalled from the earth. Remember, all of them were sent to help us on mission, on soul winning, that day every angel will report back in heaven because the job is finished. All. No angel was left on earth. Of course, if I tell you what is now going on on earth for those left behind. No angel. And all the angels stood round about the throne, about the elders and the four beasts, and they fell before the throne of God and worshipped God. Verse 12. And then they, they sang this song. 
great song. Thank God that some people have captured it and we sing it now. Verse 13. And one of the elders answered and said unto me, What are these which I read in white robes? Said, I'm one of those in the white robes. You see, what pre precedes tabernacle is atonement. Atonement. That's what made their robes white. Who are these that are dressed in white robe? Where did they come from? Look at verse 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they that came out of what? The great truth. These are last day's harvest. These millions that would take a kind of harvest that God is waiting for. When he said the husband man is waiting till he received the precious food, the harvest of the earth, that would tell you the amount of souls, the billions of souls that needs to join what has been accomplished for this job to be finished. And yet it's going to be a quick work. All the things you saw happening in the life of a ministry of Jesus will be common on earth among believers. People are going to be walking on water. People are going to be raising the dead. People will walk in where people are already dead and rotten. Spread their hand like this. The bodies will come back. And they will wake up like Lazarus. Cities are going to be shaking. Communities are going to be shaking to his very core foundation. At the end of it, Those who did not receive Christ will have themselves to be blamed. They came out of this last day's tribulation, but they washed their robes and made, they did the washing. They washed their robes and made them white. What? He's talking about atonement. He's talking about sanctification. Somebody is talking in tongues. It's an arm robber. He's talking in tongues. He's sleeping with people's wife. That era has ended, my friend. The last day's move of God is also coming with judgment. It's either you do atonement or read that place. He said, or oh, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Pentecost can go with yeast. The glory does not. The glory and sin don't mix. They don't mix. Explosion will occur somewhere. Pentecost, you can have yeast there. Tabernacle does not go with sin. How many of you truly want to move into the, the next level of what God has for you? Let me see you. If you are tired of this one, how many of you want it? And you know why it's very important? Beyond every other thing, you want to be part of the raptured sense. You want to be part of that army that made it final. You can see there were going to be millions, billions from different countries. So don't stay here and be telling yourself everybody's doing it. Everybody's not. Don't stay here and tell yourself everybody's corrupt. Everybody's not. Don't stay there and, 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 and tell yourself everybody's misbehaving. Everybody's not. I see Christians that are, some of them, single girl, they wear this ring of chastity. No sex to marriage. And there are millions. There is one. There are up to three different movements in the U.S. There are only purity, sexual purity. Young people that are going into ministries, campus fellowships, and some of them now think it's an era of corruption. Hey, hey! A new season is coming to the body. We're going to see shake-ups in campuses. We're going to see a crop of men, young men. God will use to shake up and recover the youths in their mass. 
men that will walk in glory that sometimes he said I will do a walk in your days which if they were told you you will hardly believe If you look into the ministry of Jesus, it was a combination of things that created that fullness. Not just anointing, clothing with power. There was also authority. There are sometimes like he just speaks. And people are, are wondering, who, what kind of thing is this? That even demons obey him. The wind obey him. The storm obey him. Uh, that woman whose daughter was tormented of the devil came and bowed and said, even the dogs, he said, go. Your daughter has been delivered. No, no transfer of anointing. All this touch my garment. No, no, no. There's something else he carried. Spiritual authority. When he speaks a word, that word is backed by angels. Because when he finished that fasting, Luke 4, 14 said, he returned in the power of the spirit. The Bible said, angels came and ministered unto him. The job of those angels is to enforce any word that leaves his mouth. These are some of the elements of Christ's fullness that you must carry. High level. Because we're going to have signs in the heavens, signs in the sky, pillars of fire. Men that will speak, rain will not fall. And they come to the community where rain has not fallen for three days. They call for crusade and say, this evening we are bringing rain to the community. Even the traditional rain, everybody comes. They have been suffering for three, three, three years. They say, who is that man? They think, they think it's a joke. When they finish preaching, introducing Jesus, he leaves off and says, Father, that these people might know that who Jesus is, that he is your son. Now, let the keys of heaven be unlocked. And let it. Rain will pursue people from crusades. The next night, the other neighboring communities will show up. Elijah said, before God who I stand, there shall be no rain. Men whose words will become law. That era has come. You tell a man, go. Be it unto you. Election is already won. He tell a man, go. That contract is sorted out. People that will operate in high level dominion. These last days move of God is coming with kingdom power. It's going to be demonstration of, of authority at a level that will shake this whole world. The structures of this universe will shake at the spoken words. This is not just about anointing now. If you look at Luke chapter 9 verse 1, where he delegated authority and power to his disciples, the Bible said, and he called his 12 together and gave them. You can't give what you don't have. What did he give? He gave them power and gave them what? Authority. Over all devils to cure all diseases. So, with all of these elements combining, there is nothing Finally, combining with one more element called the wisdom of God. The man, he's preaching. He knows. You see, you see what he was doing with the woman at the well? He can read your life. He has word of knowledge. has word of wisdom. Those things that the prophets carry with him, with them. And even that day, he was tired. He carries that same wisdom that Daniel had. Please, know what is coming in the future. No, no things that are going on. All of that combined. This is the new era in the church. This is the new era in the church. It's not all these arranging prophecy. Getting to find out people, they, some people or whatever, and coming around and be fooling yourself. The, the real thing is now here. It's coming. It's here. Tabernacle is here. God sent me to announce that the season has come. And that the church should now wake up and adjust. Go through atonement. Go through consecration. There are certain things, excesses you need to now bind with covenant and restriction.
bring that you are rebellious thing on the, on the cross. Bring that you are greed on the altar. Bring that you are excesses on the altar. Bring that you are immorality on the altar. Bring that you are slander. Get your tongue under control. Men fall on our face, kneel down, whatever shape, sit down, stand up, and just pray for a few minutes. If you don't know what to pray, pray in the spirit, please. You don't know what to do, pray in the spirit. You want to kneel down, kneel. Whatever posture helps your spirit to communicate. Let's just pray. If you have not given your life to Christ or you know that you have not been living right for him, get up from your seat. Come to the altar. Let me pray with you while others are praying. Get up from your seat and come. You can't stay in that state and move into the deep things of God. Get up from your seat and come. You know you have not given your life to Christ? Maybe you are outside. Get up from there and come. God bless you. God bless you as you are coming. Lay that thing down on the altar and tell him to come in into your life and transform you into a new man. Make you a brand new person. Give you the power of the Holy Spirit within you to enable you to live the life he has called you to live, the Christian life. If there are more people who want to come, let them come. Can some of my guys sing it? I surrender to you. Everything I give to you. Withhold it not. Withhold. Just like Passover, there is a spiritual side to it. It is having the salvation experience. Just like Pentecost, there is a spiritual side. It's getting the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When you come to tabernacle, the entering into the experience be begins with a set of consecration. Consecration experience. Consecration experience. And that's where the door is opened. The door of glory, the door of greater glory is open through that and there are others they go through afflictions and certain trying time and they understand what god is doing they they utilize that period and they come out of that experience new people brokenness is what is the barrier is the thing that god wants to accomplish brokenness 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 so his glory can be released through your life Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I surrender all to you. Everything I give. withholding nothing those of you watching from home is that place of surrender you have come to today that place enter into this new level of consecration with the lord 
God wants to use you to showcase his glory in this earth today is that day withholding nothing withholding nothing withholding nothing father do a work that only you can do yes we can receive christ but we cannot produce regeneration in our lives it's the holy spirit that produces that we can be hungry but we can't fill ourselves with the holy spirit it is the holy spirit that does that when we come in atonement in surrender of our life and in consecration but it's you that clothes us with that new garment do that that only you can do do that work of purging and cleansing clothe everyone with a new garment clothe everyone with a new garment all of these ones that have come to the altar seeking you cleanse them with the blood of atonement the blood of jesus that was shed on calvary and then fill them with your spirit let them live with a new life with a new power in their inward world with a new clothing of your glory on their lives let all of them live here change and then send them out to become world changers lord thank you lord this is why you brought us here this year this weekend perfect that work in everyone's life change ministries transform pastors transform ministers transform churches transform your people transform your people transform I surrender to you everything I give to you withholding nothing withholding nothing withholding nothing withholding nothing those of you who join him from around the world your life will not be the same again but your christian life and your ministries it will not be the same again it will not be the same again god can count on you as he goes after the last day's harvest thank you lord i give you praise i give you praise deploy multitude of angels to go with all of these ones who are making consecrations before you to back their ministries up with heavy signs and wonders and mighty acts of God. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Everybody just stand on your feet. These ones that are here, if you have any paper, you can give them. When you leave here, go after the harvest. Go after the harvest. Go after the harvest. And then you will start seeing strange things. Strange things. What God will do with your life, with your ministries. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. You can go. When you feel that, you come back and drop it on the altar. Don't miss Holy Spirit conferences. Don't. There are things. There are things God wants to. There are things. But God bless you. You will not be the same again. You will not. You will not. You will not. I can tell. <laughs>